with a vote of uh, 37 against two in favor and two against uh, uh, this committee finds probable cause to impeach the Chief Justice. The House Committee on Justice, voting 38 to 2 Thursday, decides Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serena should be impeached. Determination of probable cause is the fourth and final step of the impeachment process at the level of the House panel. The committee report, which will contain the articles of impeachment, will be sent to the House plenary for voting. If at least one third of the House votes in favor of the report that recommends Serena's impeachment, she is deemed impeached. If that happens, Serena will be the second official impeached by the 17th Congress. The first was former Commission on Elections Chair Andres Bautista, who was impeached last October. The articles of impeachment will then be sent to the Senate, which will judge Serena as guilty or innocent. The House Justice Committee began deliberating the case in September last year, roughly two weeks after lawyer Larry Gadon's complaint was endorsed by 25 lawmakers. Gadon accused Serena of bypassing the on-bank, missed declarations in her statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, and abusing her privileges as Chief Justice. But other allegations emerged in the course of the hearings. Lawmakers discovered Serena apparently failed to file her sal N several times during her stint as a law professor at the University of the Philippines. These are some of the most serious allegations against her, according to lawmakers. The Bureau of Internal Revenue also recently found possible discrepancies in Serena's filings after the committee ordered it to check possible irregularities. Serena has since taken a leave from her post after a Supreme Court on bank consensus. Ousted Navy Chief Ronald Mercado during the House hearing on the controversial frigates deal Wednesday says the combat management system supplier he opposed, Korean firm Hanwha Systems, was not subjected to the necessary post-qualification assessments. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana in the same hearing blames Mercado for the issues that hounded the project. Mercado was relieved for alleged insubordination over the 15.7 billion peso frigates project for supposedly insisting on getting the CMS of Dutch company Tacticos Talis installed in the warships instead of Hanwha systems. Winning shipbuilder Hyundai Heavy Industries offered in 2016 Tacticos Talis and Hanwha Talis in its bid documents. Hanwha Talis, a joint venture company, split up in 2016, shortly after it passed post-qualification assessment of the Philippine Navy. The surviving company of the separation was Hanwha Systems. Mercado says this means the new company, Hanwha Systems, cannot be declared qualified to supply the CMS of the Philippine warships. He says he had an honest intention when he pushed for Tacticos Talis. In an earlier Senate hearing, senior Navy officers unanimously agreed in their preference for Tacticos Talis over Hanwha Systems. But Navy Chief Robert M. Pedrad vouches for the CMS of Hanwha Systems. He says both makers supposedly passed the inspection of the Philippine Navy, and it is inaccurate to say the CMS of Hanwha Systems is inferior. The United Nations Human Rights Chief stamps President Rodrigo Duterte for ordering the Philippine National Police to ignore possible probes over the alleged human rights violations under the war on drugs. Duterte earlier told police to ignore UN Special Rapporteurs, saying they have no right to interfere in the way he runs the country. This is the latest in a series of tirades by Duterte against the UN. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Zaid Ra'ad Al Hussein also condemns the continuous vilification of UN Special Rapporteur Agnes Calamard. Foreign Secretary Alan Caetano previously said Calamard won't be allowed to probe the war on drugs because of her bias and antagonistic stance. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque also said that the Duterte administration wants a different rapporteur to investigate. Zaid says the Philippine government has a duty to uphold human rights and to engage with persons appointed because it is a signatory to many international treaties and a member of the UN Human Rights Council. He says, quote, This authoritarian approach to governance threatens to irreparably damage 30 years of commendable efforts by the Philippines to strengthen the rule of law and respect for the human rights of the people. Mm -hmm. 